we had a pretty good relationship again with Cliff Freeman, who was a creative director. And he wanted the right thing. He said, after a while, he was terrific because he'd seen my work and he'd gear it toward the type of things I wanted to do. And then we'd work it out before. He'd come in with an idea, you know, and then we'd build on that or whatever. But as far as Wendy's go, the original thing on the Wendy's Where's the Beep, what he came in with, or this young couple, well, first of all, he'd seen a commercial I had done before. It was for, and I don't know if that's on the reel or not, for a, uh, a product called Suburbia. And <clears throat> I had these big heads with a guy, it was like a franchise, and a guy said, uh, and you'd have this tongue coming out, and a guy said, I want a hamburger with Ryan to come out, and he took it out, and it was this hamburger, and he opens up the, the, the bun, pulls the bun off, and there's this little piece of meat. And he said, hey, there's the meat. And I had this one guy, it was a, some guy that I just got off the boat, but he had a great experience, I used him. And he said, there's, where's the meat, where's the meat? And, you know, going through this whole thing. Anyhow, he'd seen that. And what he had come up with were, this, were these young people, they're a man and a woman, and they're at the counter, and they've just been given this humongous bun. It was like this big in the drawing. And I thought, it's completely unbelievable. Uh, I, you know, and first of all, they were young. And the gal takes the, the, the lid off the bun and says, oh, isn't that a nice big bun? And they take the lid off, and there's this little piece of meat. And they look at the little piece of meat, and they say, Oh, but it is a nice big trying to make the best of a bad situation because that's one of my bits where I said you're always trying to make the best of a bad situation. But I said this was an absurd situation. I didn't buy it from the beginning. No young couple is going to do this. I, you know, they're going to say what the hell is this? You know, and you had the you had the counter guy saying, "Isn't it a nice big fluffy bun?" And the whole humor was supposed to be built around this humongous bun. Well, I looked at it, I said, you know, this is totally unbelievable. So I brought down the bun to an average size bun. And then I thought, but this young couple, they're accepting this. When you, and I, I couldn't, that's when I thought I had, a, I had a, a couple of aunts that came to visit me one time when I, was, when I just came to Chicago. And I lived in this, this boarding house, this dump. And they came in. And they're, oh, isn't this a nice room? I mean, they're trying to make the best of the, all this, you know. Oh, look at the light coming in the window. I mean, the place was a dump. And I thought back about them, an older couple. And that's where I saw the two ladies, two little ladies. And so I put the two little ladies in. But, you know, it was only about a couple days before that I thought of Clara as being like the bull in the china shop thing. And so... I mean, Cliff was just open to all these. And so I brought in Clara and her line, where, where's all the beef? Well, I guess she couldn't say it. She, by this time, she, Clara was in her 80s and she had all sorts of physical problems. I mean, it's, and, and, but this, she had emphysema. And so she'd say, where's all, and it just sort of died. So that's when I shortened it, not thinking, just, just say, where's the beef? And that's when she said, where's the beef? And I got rid of the counter guy. And then I also added that line at the end, I don't think there's anybody back there. You know, and all of these, so that's what I, you build on that. And uh, I love things too that no one ever quite caught on to, which is okay. I love to throw things in the background. I don't care whether they catch them or not. But if you look in the background in that, that, that commercial, there are, you know, are there are like nooks where people can go and sit down. There's no one, there's no way anyone could get in any one of those nooks. It's all <laughs> locked off. I would, in other commercials I did for Independent Life, I'd throw, Rudy Horn was this older guy, an old vaudevillian guy. He always played a great drunk. And any time I had him, I'd give him a little extra dough and I'd have him some extra and he'd play a drunk in the background. People never saw this stuff, but it was fun.